Hey guys, it's Amanda here from Faithfully Homemade. And today I have some ideas, or maybe you could call them tips and tricks, on how you can make reading a little bit more interactive for your kids or your students. Um, I'm going to show you some things you can do with really little kids who don't read yet, um, kids that are just learning to read, and then also kids that already know how to read. Um, and you know, that need just need more practice and make it a little bit more fun. So these are some of the things I do. Maybe you already do them too. And um, I hope this is interesting for you. So here we go. Okay guys, so I'm gonna start with really, really simple little babies that you are reading with. Let's say you're reading an alphabet book with a baby. Um, when you turn the page, and maybe you guys do this, I don't know, but my babies like to just like fling the pages. They don't want to sit there and let you read it to them. So um, what I do is I hold it with both hands and then I read it. I hold it so that they can't fling it. They can't turn the page yet until we're done. I'm done doing it with them. And then what I will do is I'll say like, I will make sure that I repeat the sounds. So I will say like, ah, ah, ants. A is for ants, a, a, a. And um, the reason I do that is just because, um, or I'll say A, A, A a lot, depending on what I wanna do, if I wanna emphasize the sound or emphasize the letter. And the reason I do that is because it really helps with speech. So repetition with sounds is very, very good for speech. And then once I've done that with them, then I will just stick my finger under so that the page is kinda up like this. And then I'll say to the baby or you know the toddler, Okay, turn the page, and then the baby will learn to turn the page when I'm done. And then I'll make sure I'm holding the pages down, and I do the same thing. B, B, B is for bird, B, 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 C, 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 you know, you get the idea. But I'm holding the pages, and then when I'm ready to turn it, I just stick my finger in so that it's kind of up like this, they can grab it easily, and then they can turn the page for me. So they're learning that we turn the page, and then we read, and we turn the page, and then we read, but we don't, you know, just go crazy turning pages. I hold it in like this, and then they can uh, turn it when we're ready. So that's just one little tip that I do. Another fun thing I like to do with little, little ones is I like to use alphabet blocks. Here's some alphabet blocks. And um, I think anybody who has a baby or a toddler has alphabet blocks. You can use the bigger ones. These ones are little ones. I have big ones too. Um, but I just have these out for example. And so when we're doing it, we'll say, ah, ah, ants. And then I'll take it out the block and I'll hand it to the baby or the toddler. And I'll have them put the A on the page to match up the A with the A or whatever we're reading. So um, I like to do that. It's just kind of like something to give them to do. And so you may have seen that in some of my other videos, but I'll just have them do that. And then as we're reading, you know, B, B, B is for bird. This is a B. This is a big B and this is a little B. Or you could say capital and lowercase B. Can you put the B on there? And then I'll just see if they can stand the B on the, you know, put the B on the B page. So just something fun to do with babies. Okay, so moving on to kids who are learning to read. Um, these books are fun, and I made these books so that they could kind of sound out words, but you could do this with any book, as long as there's just about one word on a page. And what I do is I have them sound it out. So this would be b uh, g bug and then they say the whole word, bug. Um, and then um, as we're reading it, I also like to pair it up with letters. So like you saw, um, I used the blocks for the baby. Um, I might use these. These are letter, um, um, what do you call them, bean bags. And then I would have them make the word. So I'd have him make bug because we read the word bug. Okay, so that's one way to do it. Um, so when you're sounding out with your children and you're reading stories, you can pair it up with alphabet letters just to make it a little bit more interesting. You can use these kind of letters here, or you could also use um, magnetic letters. And when I use, when I use magnetic letters, um, I might put the book on a cookie sheet and then the magnets will stick, or I'll have them do it up on a whiteboard. This is a whiteboard. And so if I look at the page, after he reads cat, then I would have him make the word cat. So he's going to take his letters 
and I'm putting them up here, and he's going to make the word, why doesn't that want to stay? He, he's going to make the word cat. And then, um, another thing I might do is have him think of other words that rhyme with cat. Or if I could take away the C, I could take away the C and say, all right, what letter could we put there to make another word? So instead of just cat, what could we make? And maybe he would, um, you know, pick up the M and make the word um, mat. Or maybe he'd find a B and make the word bat or whatever. But um, so it's fun to kind of just take, take off from a story or from a book and start making um, more words. So that's practicing kind of rhyming and things like that. So I really like using simple little, you know, sounded out books like this um, to do that. You could also do that with um, a storybook. So here's Fox on a Box. This is uh, like a phonics reader, but any kind of storybook that's easy um, like this would work. So as you're reading it with your child, you could do something like this. So as you're reading, you would read, Hungry Fox spots a box. Hungry Fox hops onto the box. Okay, and so as you're reading that, you could either focus in on the words that rhyme. So you could say, okay, what words rhyme here? Hungry Fox hops onto the box. And then the child would say, Fox and box. And then you could have them use their uh, magnetic letters. And what they could do is they could make Fox and box up on the board. Or this would be a really good story to focus on short vowels. And sorry, I'm out of breath because um, I'm, I'm only like a week away from having my baby and uh, it just puts me out of breath. But anyway, um, this would be a good book to focus on short vowel sounds. So you could say, okay, hungry fox spots a box. What words on this page say the ah sound? And then they would pick out fox spots and box, and then you could have them make all three of those words up on here with their magnetic letters. Or if you don't have magnetic letters, then they could just write it with a um, dry erase marker and write those three words. And then um, continue reading the story and keep finding more short vowel words to add, or short O words, to add to the list um, that you made, or more rhyming words, whatever you're deciding to work on with that story. Now, another thing I want to tell you about is when you're first um, teaching kids to read, one strategy that's good is to um, do the repeat strategy. So what you do is the adult reads first and then the child repeats. So you would read fox on a box and then the child, child would read fox on a box. So they're kind of repeating you, but they're getting used to reading the story. So it's when children are really, really early readers. So the parent would read, hungry fox spots a box. Then the student would read, hungry fox spots a box. And I generally do one sentence or only one page each time. So I'll read one page and then the student will read one page. Or I'll read one sentence, depending on how many, you know, how long the the pages, um, one sentence, and the student will read one sentence. And it's just a good way um, to do it is just to have a repeat. So that is another idea. I also have um, some books here. This is a vowel book. And I made this book so that students could focus on vowel sounds as they're reading. So they would look at the picture and they would say shells. And then they would have to find the vowel and add it in there. I like to use magnetic letters or just whatever kind of letters you have laying around um, for them to, you know, find the, the um, middle letter. So this is bug and they would put a U in there. And then that way they can use the book over and over again because if you do it with a pencil or something like that, um, they can only use the book once. But um, I really like these books for that reason. So this would be short A. And this would be short E, egg, box. Now, if you don't have um, books that are already pre-made like this, you could cover up a letter in the book. So take, for example, this book. This is a book about pets. What we could do is I could cover up this letter before the child sees it. And I could say, this story is called Pets. Do you know what vowel you would hear in pets? And then they could tell you the vowel or they could find the magnetic letter. And when you uncover your finger, then they would see that that vowel 
um, you know, was E. This would also be a good time to break out some of these little pom-poms. You've seen in my other videos, they have magnets on the back. And you could cover up any word you want. And you could um, use the story for uh, and practice context clues. So I could cover up, like in this sentence, I would cover up dog. And then I would have the child read a, a something is a pet. They would have to use their picture clue and figure out what they think this word is. A dog is a pet. And then I could cover up that word again. A blank is a pet. And they would say a fish is a pet. This is a, a predictable book. By the way, any of these books you see, I'm gonna leave a link below where you can download them off my website. Um, and they're also included in my kindergarten, first grade reading bundle. And they're also included in a couple other things. So I'll leave the links below. Also my kindergarten literacy curriculum. So anyway, but um, that's beside the point. So like for this one, I might decide to cover up pet because now they've done two pages where pet was the last word. So hopefully they will remember what that word is supposed to be. So they would read a cat is a, and then hopefully they would say pet and then they could uncover it to see if they were correct. So these are great for that, covering up words or letters in a book. And then, finally, I wanted to talk to you about um, reading with older children. Now, this is a book that my fifth grader has been work, working on reading. He is reading a um, biography on George Washington. And um, one of the things I like to do with older kids when they're reading is um, doing the read with me method where you sit down with the child the adult starts reading, and then they just stop. You just stop mid-sentence. So you just pick anywhere to stop. So these are finally done, remarked Lawrence Washington to George after Anne. And then I would just stop. And he would have to pick up where I stopped and read. And, read. and then he could just stop where he wanted, and I would have to pick up where he read. Um, and it's just a way to make sure that the child is following along with you as they're reading. Um, and so, you know, don't have a specific place to stop. So don't say, okay, I'm going to read this page and you read this page and so on, because then they don't have to necessarily be following. But if you just stop mid sentence and then they have to pick it up, um, you know, for sure that they were following along as you were reading. And obviously that's really important as they're, um, looking at the words and hearing you read with them. Um, so, and then you would obviously be following along as they're reading and helping them out. So that is one really fun way we like to do it. Um, we even do that with our Bible reading. So I'll read, you know, and I'll stop mid, you know, mid verse. And then one of the kids will have to, um, like either my nine or 10 year old will have to pick up where I stopped reading. And, you know, and it, it's just like a great um, way to keep them engaged to make sure that they're following along with you. So that is one of the things I definitely do. I also do a lot of questioning as I'm reading with them. So, um, you know, as we're reading, I'll stop, you know, mid page and, and ask them a question about what they're reading to make sure they're comprehending and understanding as we go along. I especially like to point out words that are probably not um, familiar vocabulary. Now, in these books, it's kind of nice because down at the bottom, they'll have like um, ways to pronounce, you know, certain words if they're having trouble, or they'll even have um, uh, definitions of words that a student might not tend to know. So um, that's always fun, but if they don't have that, then I will, of course, tell, you know, ask the child, Do you, did you know what that word meant? And if they didn't, then we will um, look it up or I'll tell them, you know, what the meaning of it was in the context of the book. So that is just an example of what I do with older kids. So there you have it there. So just a few little tips and tricks of what I do when I'm reading with my kiddos. I hope that was helpful for you. And if you have any uh, tips and tricks of what you do to try to make it a little bit more fun and interactive when you're reading with your kids, leave them in the comments below. I'd love to hear. And again, I will leave links to any of these books um, where you can get them down below. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.